Hi, everybody. It's great to be here, and I want to welcome you to the afternoon for the Space Apps for New York City. And I'd also like to thank everybody who spoke this morning for setting up this afternoon so perfectly. Much of what was discussed this morning, I'm going to underscore in my talk and expand upon. So I think it's really a great setup. And I know that all of us are very interested in innovation and communication and collaboration. And we just heard a great discussion of diversity in our collaboration. And I hope that if I do my job correctly, I will add in your minds that diversity includes the arts, which I define as all forms of creative communication. So here we are at the Space Apps Challenge. I want to tell you about why I personally am interested in innovation and communication and collaboration, a little bit about what we actually know about those processes, and thus why using the art can actually be beneficial for science and technology integrated in order to enhance those processes. And then I'm going to tell you how we have developed a systematic approach integrating arts and science and engineering so that we can further space exploration and space development. First, I have to tell you a little bit about myself. I am an includer, which means that I'm not really big on exclusive groups of people. I like to mix it up and put a lot of different kinds of people together. And for me, that's the best way to do things because when you have an exclusive group, you close a door or you go down one path at the expense of missing what's down the other path. And I've been that way since I was a kid. So I grew up in a house that emphasized humanities. Mom was an English teacher, an aspiring painter, and a writer. All my hobbies were about music and uh, the arts. And I felt very at home in that world. But I was also very interested in the sciences. I was lucky enough to have great science teachers, and I learned that I was good at science and that I really loved it. But you know what happens when you go to college? You have to choose a major. And you have to choose a career path. So I decided that I would become a neuroscientist. And the reason I decided to become a neuroscientist is because neuroscience is the science of creativity thoughts and emotions. So it was this great mix of all the things that interested me. What's natural when you become a scientist is that you get more and more specialized. So pretty soon, I was part of that exclusive group of neuroscientists that studied a tiny little piece of a molecule that was incredibly important to the nervous system. And I thought I was doing good science but I wasn't personally satisfied being down in the small part of knowledge. So I wanted to back up and think more about the big picture, why I was doing what I was doing, connecting people and patterns and things. So I left the lab bench, and I joined the strategy and collaborative table. And I started to, I worked for NASA Life Sciences, coordinating international space life sciences programs. And that's when I really came to appreciate the challenge and the value of communicating when you have a mixed group of people. In addition, I was also taking innovation training. And for most of you out there, probably the mantra of thinking out of the box, you know, you've been thinking about that since you were five. For me, that was a bit of a change of thinking and I wanted to learn more about communication and innovation. So what is innovation? Innovation is actually implementing a new product or a process that's valuable for business, the government, or society. But a new product or process comes from a new idea. So there is no innovation without creativity. So what do we know about creativity? How are we going to make ourselves more creative this whole weekend? Well, let's think about what we, we know from people who we appreciate to be creative. Creativity does not come from only having one kind of knowledge or experience base. And we know that we, 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 there's this great quote from Robert Heinlein, the great sci-fi author. Similarly, Einstein 
agrees and expands on that idea and says that creativity is not just about knowledge. What's actually more important is the mental process of imagination. So what else do we know about creativity? We know that creative people have a detailed and a broad knowledge and experience base. They are open to new ideas and they have a well-developed imaginative process, which means that they see patterns that may be obscure to the rest of us. They make associations and connections and they look at things with a different perspective. And I think that we can train ourselves and our teams to be better at making these new intellectual associations. The third element, often in creative people, is that they're motivated. They care. Whether they are motivated intrinsically, you know, from within themselves or externally, it's still that they care. We also know something about the process of being creative. The first step is that you develop your knowledge base, broad and in-depth. The second step is this incubation phase where you make all these different mental associations. And a lot of that requires us to actually actively stop thinking the way we always think. So for some of us, that's a kind of unconscious or semi-conscious phase. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of us will make our greatest creative ideas while we're taking a shower or exercising or we're half asleep. So we want to do things that make us think differently and have a different perspective. The next phase is that your ideas filter into your consciousness and then you have to do a reality check. Is this a novel idea or is it a totally insane idea? So the whole process of innovation starts out super messy. And for me, as a trained scientist, it feels uncomfortable. I was trained to think linearly and analytically, but instead, the creative process is not so linear. Collaboration is also essential for the creative process, and that means these diverse groups of people, bringing in people with lots of different experience bases, different demographics, different nationalities and backgrounds. Chance for innovation is, is better when we have these connected environments. So talking a little bit about communication though, communication is essential in order for us to have good collaboration. And there's the, the form of communication that means that we present our data well and it's interesting and it's understandable. But there's another form of communication, and that's the capture of the higher level concept. That's, can we explain what we're doing in just one piece of information? Can we explain the why of why we're bothering to work so hard to do interesting and different things? Can we allow multiple perspectives to come together using a universal language? Can we inspire and motivate people to care about what we do and want to be a part of it and feel invested in it? This is a very different but important aspect of communication. So how can we promote all of this innovation, collaboration, communication in our space science and technology communications? Well, there's actually a lot of evidence that arts integration works very well in our, in our science and technology communication, science and technology communities. So whether it's because we're trying to ch train our children to be interested in science and technology and able to use that information in a creative way, or whether we're trying to train ourselves to look at our science and technology in a different way. So arts are very important. And we had an opportunity, which I'll get to in a moment. I just want to mention that the arts are also very important for inspiring people to be interested, interested in space. And you know, my personal inspiration came from the original Star Trek. And you can see how important I thought it was that I actually wanted to dress up like a Star Trek character. So, Back in 2009, we had an opportunity to take all of the information that I just explained to you and try to develop a science integrated with art approach to help 
support the development and, of space and also space exploration in general. What was happening in 2009 is not what was happening in the 60s. Everybody was thinking about putting a man on the moon, but instead, in 2009, this is what was happening. The shuttle was retiring, and there was a lot of misinformation about what was happening in space. And we were also embarking on a new era, and we needed to have a lot of creative ideas, whether they were propulsion, new ideas in propulsion, or new ideas about how we're going to store food for long duration missions. In addition, there was another thing happening at that time on a personal level for me. I was on the scientific planning committee for a, an international co conference called the next golden age of human spaceflight. And for some reason, it just really hit me very hard at that point. We can stay within our community and we can talk about that next golden age until we're blue in the face. But if we don't engage the public adults and, ch and current children in that process, then the people who are actually going to carry out that golden age and support it will not be invested in that future. So we needed to engage them in some way. We created the Humans in Space Art program. And it's a very basic process. The first thing is you invite people of all ages and backgrounds, it's an international program, to learn about what we know about space and science and technology, and then to think about the future. Then we invite them to relay their messages, their perspectives, their conceptual ideas, their out-of-the-box ideas through, through creative communication, visual, literary, musical, and film artwork. Then. We weave it into displays and performances online, in, locally, worldwide, and in space so that their artwork can then inspire the rest of the world and we begin a global dialogue about the future of space. The first project, there are three projects, actually targets participants as children. And these are children currently 10 to 18 years old. We've had thousands of participants from 52 countries, and we've had nearly 100 displays and performances of their artwork, small to large, and hundreds and thousands of viewers. I'm gonna tell you about the, the displays in a moment. You can see that we have a lot of different styles of communication, and also topics of what the public, the children around the world think are, is important about the future of space. Our displays and performances are as small as a slideshow of visual art like you're seeing over there. Um, if you have a chance, we also have a symphony written by a 15-year-old inspired by the uh, pillars, the, the Eagle Nebula, the pillars of creation, if you know about the Hubble Space Telescope imagery and some poetry. But we, we create things as large as multimedia live performances with symphonies created by children and Snoop Doggy Dog in Russian and uh, visual art and dance interpretations and all sorts of things interspersed with films. So they're really quite amazing. And we've actually bounced artwork off the moon as well as sent it to the International Space Station. Based on this project, we have also created a project for the next demographic, that's college and early career professionals, and we've held a, visit, a video contest recently for that demographic with 150 artists from 15, 16 countries, and we're currently touring that artwork. The artwork is diverse from animation to interv interview style, documentary, and we even had a shadow puppet entry that actually won second place from the United K Kingdom. We also have a program for professional artists to get engaged with us. It's the Celebrity Artist Fed Engagement or CAFE program. And we piloted this program with a Japanese pop star whose name is Sputniko and she created a short film in collaboration with us encouraging young women to put their unique footstep in the lunar soil. 
We do have some near-term activities coming up, and I'd love to talk with anybody about whether they're interested in helping us to engage the public in participating in, this, in, in a near-term contest or to use the artwork in interesting display and performance opportunities. We have a, a nonprofit now to continue this work and also expand it to other realms of science and technology. I'd be happy to talk about that as well. And I'm going to just say that I hope by having this short talk today, I'm gonna to help everybody to let go of their current ways of thinking and their conceptualizing and to encourage you to broaden the way you look at things and also mix up your groups and your communities a little bit so that we can continue to have great discussions about mind-blowing things like will we find life on other planets or what are some novel ways that we can travel in space in the future. So hopefully, even after this weekend, all of us will work hard to be more engaging, innovative, and collaborative in space and science and technology because we really do believe that working together, we can imagine, discuss, and create the future, inspiring the world about space, advancing space development, and basically improving life on Earth. Thank you.